Welcome to Random Reactions, a show where I discuss articles I've read over the past week and give my random reactions to them. On this episode, I discuss stories about John Oliver's love and hate of British food, a new 1980s sci-fi movie documentary, a beer can shortage, and about the schedule for the ongoing NCAA Men's Basketball Conference tournaments. Also, my friend Javier Tato shows his love for Liverpool FC following its Carabao Cup win over Chelsea. Let's get random. To begin the rundown this week, I start with a story on John Oliver's taste in British food, which aired on a segment during The Late Show with Stephen Colbert. In an article titled, John Oliver Says Criticism of British Food is Warranted as He Defends His Favorite Dishes, written by Dave Quinn on People.com, we learn that beans for breakfast is madness. But Oliver has always eaten beans with breakfast, and obviously the United States has different options for food. So on an ongoing Late Show Food Court segment, Oliver talks about his childhood in the U.K., and how bad the food actually was in the 1970s. Not a lot of flavor at all. A lot of bland food and traditional UK food. However, there is also the Indian food that came to the region that Oliver says is out of this world. And remember, the hunger for curry will last 3 million years into our future thanks to Lister on the Jupiter mining ship Red Dwarf. I personally love curry and Indian dishes, so I figure that those options in the UK are definitely ones to indulge in if I ever visit there. Uh, the article, of course, had me watch the segment itself, and as always when it comes to John Oliver and Stephen Colbert content, it's pure gold. And while I've never been to the UK yet, and that's a big yet, as Liverpool and Edinburgh are two places I plan on visiting first uh, when I go to that region at some point in my life, but I've had friends who have either gone many times to watch soccer games or have studied abroad there. I've heard stories from them about the food, and yes, uh, one friend who went to Scotland said he was definitely sick of beans by the end of it, and he definitely missed Mexican food, something you don't think about. But there were delicious Indian and other Asian dishes that were available that uh, were enjoyed. And not everything is completely horrible. But they were definitely happy being back in the U.S. Uh, eating uh, the, the options that we have here. Um, you know, as a person who loves to cook and try different dishes, I definitely enjoy stories like this, especially when they have some humor. So kudos to John Oliver, who my friend once met in Madison, Wisconsin, when they forgot that camels can't walk in snow during the Scott Walker protest on a Daily Show segment. He's letting us know some vital information about Spotted Dick here. Moving on to another fun story from the director of a documentary on 1980s horror films, David Wiener, we learn of another 1980s movie documentary, this one on 80s sci-fi films. In an article called This 5-Hour Love Story to 80 Sci-Fi Celebrates All Your Favorite Movies, written by Jermaine Lucier on Gizmodo.com, we learn that a trailer has dropped for In Search of Tomorrow, the definitive 80 sci-fi documentary. There are interviews with actors, directors, and others involved in some of the greatest sci-fi movies of all time from that era, from E.T. to Aliens to Superman to Star Wars to Star Trek to Predator to Running Man to Mad Max to Escape from New York to Robocop to Blade Runner. Uh, to Tron, etc., etc., etc. Movies I grew up watching in the 90s because they were on TV all the time. It's clearly a fun documentary that just kind of goes down the list, uh, you know, of what they were meaning at the time. Like, what did these movies mean? How did this transcend filmmaking how, and the industry itself? You know, how did, how did the actors take it being a part of a new community that they're still a part of? They get to go to cons all the time and celebrate some of these characters, these iconic characters. You know, I even saw that Jesse Ventura, the ex-Minnesota governor that could still beat up your governor, make an appearance in this trailer, which, I mean, come on. I've seen so many 80s movies that just the voices of and short scenes in the trailers were enough uh, to bring me back to my childhood. Uh, and at the moment, the only way to watch this documentary, with uh, which has literally five hours of footage, by the way, is to pre-order it on the official site. Uh, in March, you would get access to a digital version. In April, you would receive a physical version with extras, and your name would be on the credits at the end. No other information is available as to where it will be or if it will ever stream anywhere else. But one thing is for sure. I'm definitely interested in geeking out to a documentary of this magnitude for someone that simply loves movies. It is a celebration to be able to get behind the scenes and, and get some 
key insight into movies that I still watch to this day. But as we go forward on my rundown here, the next story won't have too many people celebrating, unless they hate beer for some reason. I'm talking about a story that I read on the Denver Post website called More Expensive Beer? Craft Brewers Facing Dilemma Over Can Shortage. This was written by Judith Kohler. The story begins with the pandemic's effects on Upslope Brewing Company in Boulder, Colorado. They had to fight the pandemic by making more outdoor seating in order to not lay off any of its 73 employees, but now they need to find a new supplier for cans that they use for some of the beers that they brew. Essentially, the pandemic is causing a little bit of an aluminum shortage, and that has affected breweries, and a company called Ballcore has had to actually increase its minimum order because the demand is so high. So, you know, when you look at breweries like Upslope, for them to be in the loop, they have to use brokers now. Brokers obviously get money. They're kind of the middlemen in that deal. This increases the price of cans. And more cans need to be ordered, which is a huge burden, especially on small breweries. In order to make a profit, beer prices are going to go up because of this shortage. I mean, think of how tough it is for a small brewery to order four times the amount of cans that it normally would, and they have to somehow turn that over into sales in a very short amount of time. Not only is the manufacturing cost high, but the storage is difficult and the overhead costs would also rise. And stories like this have been popping up for the last several months uh, as another effect of the pandemic. So don't be shocked if the beer you love in your region does go up. Just remember you are still supporting your local craft breweries and are still helping your local communities' economies. These are part of the economic consequences that we have in a pandemic and are ones that will have to be dealt with for a long while here until everything gets a little closer to normal and uh, some of the shortages and different things like that can catch up. Uh, you know, but what does feel closer to normal with all the bad news in the world is the upcoming March Madness NCAA men's basketball tournament. Uh, it's coming. It's coming up pretty quick here. Uh, it brings me to a story about the conference tournament brackets that are now being released. David Cobb on CBS sports.com posted this article, 2022 March Madness conference tournament brackets, schedules, dates, times, automatic bids. It's essentially all the information you need for all the conferences. Uh, you know, which I do enjoy having that in one article. I, of course, am very excited for this, especially with the annoyance of the MLB lockout. And, of course, there is the women's tournament as well, filled with great teams, players, and games. And I'm excited for everything that's coming with that. Uh, the, the men's side, though, those bracket games are the one we've all come to know now. And it's because it's been around for a long time. At this point, upset special Cinderella stories Loads of analysis of what seed does what historically plentiful. It's a lot easier to fill out these brackets. Automatic bids obviously help fill out the field. And I like watching uh, the conference tournaments like the Atlantic Sun Tournament and all their smaller ones uh, just to see, you know, which of these teams that are probably going to be the only teams coming out of that conference are ones that could score upsets despite most likely being a very low seed in the tournament. And of course, the power conferences are exciting to watch as well. The Big Ten's a big one. I'm a Wisconsin fan, so I will certainly be watching them when I can during their tournament. You know, and I bring it up on this show because I will have my Sweet 16 Brain versus Taste Buds Challenge again as an experiment to see whether major analysis is needed or if luck is a bigger tool in filling out a better bracket. Last year, my brain dominated my Taste Buds. This year, we'll see as a blind taste has different beers that will be randomly tied with teams that are left in the tournament at that time, and the best beers move on which will also pick the remaining games in those final four rounds of the NCAA tournament. It's always fun. And of course I don't binge anything. The experiment is broken up over lots of time. Uh, I do this incredibly responsibly. Please don't try this yourself and definitely don't reference me if you do. But while this is still just a few weeks away this week, I move on to my top story, which will bring a special guest on the show. That's right. I'm talking about the Carabao Cup final with Liverpool FC taking down Chelsea in an epic penalty kick shootout after both teams tied 0-0 through extra time. Much like the Europa final from last season when Villarreal defeated Manchester United in a shootout that ended with the goalies needing to kick, this one came down to a main kick by Liverpool goalie Kettleher and a miss by Keppa, the goalie on the Chelsea side. Fans were going nuts after this one. If you see the YouTube videos, it's pretty fun. This is the first National Cup of the season with the FA Cup in the midst of the fifth round proper. Liverpool is taking home its record ninth Carabao Cup and its first silverware of the 2021-2022 season. 
Uh, they also still have a shot at the quad with the Premier League, FA Cup, and Champions League titles all still possibilities. As a rival Everton FC fan, this story makes me cringe with how dangerously close the Toffees are to the relegation zone in the Premier League. The FA Cup and therefore a Europa berth is still available, but clearly I want to be celebrating with Everton fans and turn Liverpool blue in the future. But while I understand some fans would never even mention the rival, I do have a friend whom you may have met if you've watched or, and or listened to the Sun-Dried Tomatoes podcast, Javier Hurtado. Uh, Javi is a Liverpool FC fan, and while it makes me die a little inside to know Everton isn't reaching the glory that Liverpool has reached at this point, I am happy for him personally. So I invited him on the show to offer up his reaction to the Liverpool FC Carabao Cup title. What the, how excited are you? You jacked? Uh, Were you jacked during this time? Yeah, no, for sure. I, um, you know, I'm not a, a, the biggest fan of penalties because of how crazy they are. But, um, you know, for me, I, I think if they kept Mendy in, I know Kepa is a big penalty, like specialist, supposedly, but like. Mendy was playing on top of his head. He was awesome. I think they should have kept him, and I don't think Liverpool would have won, or it probably wouldn't have gone all the way that long if uh, Mendy was in. But yeah, I'm excited. For the main reasons was because uh, you know we play Callagher instead of um, instead of Allison or even Adrian. So that was his cup competition. A lot of people were saying like, "Oh, it's a final. Why how come we're not playing Allison?" It's like, well, Callagher like pretty much put the team on his back. So like. You know, let him let him play. This is his cup, so I'm I'm really happy that he ended up getting a cup. And when um when you're a goalie and you win a trophy, you get your like a you get like a drawing on you on like the goalie like uh, wall over there in Melwood and all that stuff. So that's pretty dope. And uh, I'm happy for the guy, and of course happy for the win. So you know, FA Cup win today as well. So it's through the, the play. The club's in a good place, pretty much the opposite of what's going on in Chelsea. So I'm, you know, I'm over the moon. <laughs> were, were you texting your dad when uh, Liverpool pulled that off? Uh, well, yeah, not only that, but then Lutton almost beat Chelsea on top of it until they woke <laughs> up. And yeah. And it's like, you know, uh, something about, you know, Premier League teams losing in the to champion, championship sides. It's uh, It goes to show you that, yeah, even the champion side, championship sides are really strong and they can keep up. So, you know, got to love that fake up. You talk about too. You're gonna be, was it Arsenal Everton? I'm hoping that yes. uh, Everton wins that game because it could be for relegation well, or not. So. Well, that's what I'm saying. So, like, I was telling my buddy, I'm like, dude, this is gonna be a pretty big game. Like, we're starting to get close to the end of the season, and Frank needs some points for you guys, big time. Um, the bottom three is like, I mean, Newcastle looks pretty decent. Wofford is looking pretty decent. Like, they they've been kind of battling it out, and like. It, it's going to be really interesting. And, you know, Burnley is Burnley, so they're going to probably steal points from people that they shouldn't be stealing. So yeah. uh, and with Everton so close down there, you guys cannot drop anything. I mean, oh, yeah, it's making me it's, it's almost making a playoff me nervous. Game every game. So yeah. um, in Arsenal, they're right up there in that near that top four, top five. They want that Europa spot or at least a Champions League or, or you know, what I mean, like they want to play in Europe. Yeah, they can't play in Europe. Then it's a failure. And Arteta is probably going to get canned like. They need to get back in Europe. They need to make money. I know Kroenke, you know, made all that money with the Rams winning and all that. I'm sure he would like to have Arsenal back in Europe too. But you know, maybe it's time to invest a little more on the team. But hey, whatever. <laughs> so uh, I definitely have to support my boys because yeah, because you, know, you know it's uh, FA Cup coming up. So got to yeah, beat got to beat and, uh, you know Borum Wood and. Maybe so, we'll have a Merseyside FA Cup tie and, and you know, maybe Everton could pull it off or final. You know? yeah, if, if we do get Everton, Liverpool, FA Cup final, you're coming back on here and we're doing a chant off. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I'm going to be in London, so hopefully we cannot. <laughs> but so, that's um, awesome for you, though. At Wembley, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's at Wembley, so if it happens, you might have to like sneak your way in the stadium. <laughs> uh, you know, I'll, I'll probably have to pay an arm and a leg, but uh, <laughs> that would be sick. Everton's got to get it. Liverpool's had enough. It's time it's time to paint the, the town blue, man. <laughs> we'll see, man. We'll see. You know, you guys can have the FA Cup if we get the league. I'll give you that. <laughs> that scarf does look good on you, my dude. You are looking bluer than uh, than usual. <laughs> yeah. and got to get it got to get this uh fa cup win well thanks thank you javi for coming coming and talking about uh about your experience with liverpool did you see the youtube videos of the fans celebrating oh, at yeah. wembley oh, oh yeah I mean, I mean 
they call it Anfield South for a reason. So, <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe later they'll call it Goodison South when Everton actually starts to win some right. stuff. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, man. Well, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, man. Thanks for watching, liking, and subscribing. And remember, random is good. Find the time to discover visions lost in their minds. Searching and scrolling, avoiding the trolls and wishing for the seconds to start slowing. Reading the news while I drink delicious booze. Pick and choose whether to debate this or discover a new food. Rap battles and video games, no reason to wait. Instead, I take action. My passions lead to tasks and distraction. A weekly live action attraction, utter satisfaction as you watch my random reactions. Sun Dried Tomatoes channel production by Anthony Ozzo. Follow, like, reaction. and subscribe and check out other shows and a video version of the monthly podcast that you can also get audio-only versions most places that podcasts are found.